Talking Powder presents The Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conried, Alan Reed, Jill Walker, the sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of the voice of Bugs Bunny. Mm. What's up, Doc? <laughs> yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mel playing his new character, Zuki. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi. And starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. A few days ago, the whole country was filled with a festive holiday spirit. 129,999,999 people had a great time. Only one person had a miserable day. And who was that one person? You guessed it, Mel Blanc. It all started with the annual Easter egg hunt in Mel Blanc's little town. It seems that the local merchants offered cash prizes to anyone who found an egg with their ad written on it, and Mel Blanc would... Well, let's start at the beginning. It was just an ordinary day, and young couples were discussing the weather. In the park, a couple was saying... Oh, Dave, it's two weeks past spring. Yes, and it's about time I gave you a kiss. And in another part of town could be heard... Oh, well... It's two weeks past spring. Yes, it's about time I gave you a kiss. <laughs> and in Mel Blank's fix-it shop, where we find Mel and his girlfriend, Betty Colby, Betty is saying... Oh, Mel, it's two weeks past spring. Yes, and it's about time I stopped wearing my long winter underwear. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mel Blank in a romantic mood. But now we find Mel and Betty discussing a more serious topic. Say, by the way, Mel, how's business? Well, Betty, it started out terrible, and it's been falling off ever since. <laughs> there just doesn't seem to be any more fix-it work in this town. You mean you fixed everything so it can't be broken again? No, I've broken everything so it can't be fixed again. <laughs> well, I'm in a sad way financially, Betty. Well, have you tried getting a GI loan? Yeah, but I can't find a GI who wants to give me a loan. <laughs> Stop being silly. Can't, can't you get what you need at the bank? Well, not anymore. Mr. Grimes, the banker, told me not to come back again. How can you get along without the bank? Easy. I just fill my pen at the post office. <laughs> Gosh, Mel, you really are broke. Betty, I'm so broke that yesterday when I weighed myself, the penny came back with a card saying, here, you need it more than we do. <laughs> oh, Mel, stop being such a defeatist. If you only advertise to fix the job more, you do a lot better business. I'll bet you haven't even got an egg in the egg hunt. Oh, yes, I have, Betty. It's marked Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop, and if anybody finds it, they get a prize. Well, Blum's Candies is offering $25 for their egg, and my father's supermarket's offering $50 for his egg. What are you giving with your egg? Bacon and a side order of potatoes. <laughs> Either that or a dollar in cash. Oh, one dollar. No, no wonder you never get anywhere, and father doesn't think anything of you. Oh, hello, Betty. Hello, oh, Mel. Hello, Mel. Hello, Mr. Colby. Mel Blank, you idiot. I asked you to fix my cash register. What have you done to it? Well, gosh, Mr. Colby, I ran out of parts, so I substituted them with some from a jukebox I was fixing. A jukebox? No wonder. Why? What happened to the cash register? Plenty. Every time I ring up a nickel, it plays How Are Things in Glockamore. <laughs> Mel Blank, you're a failure and a moron. Oh, but Mr. Colby... Believe me, I'm telling you this for your own good. Oh, I wish someone had taken the trouble to tell me... How to become a fine, decent, upstanding citizen when I was young. Gosh, Mr. Colby, maybe it isn't too late yet. What? Why, oh, you imbecile. You talk that way to me. Why, I, I'll bet the cigar I'm smoking costs more than you've made all week. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure of that, Mr. Colby. I wouldn't be too sure. How much did it cost? Uh, well, maybe I was too hasty. Ten cents. Maybe, maybe I was too hasty. You win. <laughs> And what, may I ask, are you offering to the one who finds your egg in the contest? <laughs> a quarter? No, one... Ah, one dollar. <laughs> no, uh, one hundred dollars. Oh, one hundred dollars? Well, Mel, my son, if you can afford to offer a hundred dollars, you must be going places. Yeah, I wonder if I can make the next train to Mexico. <laughs> I mean, uh... <laughs> well, I... I, I uh... <laughs> I certainly would like to know where your egg is hidden, you nincom... Uh, you nincom... Come to see us any time, Mel. <laughs> Come, Betty. Let's go. 
Goodbye, future son-in-law. Goodbye, future. <laughs> oh, what a fix I got myself into. A hundred dollars. Where can I get that much money? Maybe I can go to Joe's pawn shop and talk to him about my watch. Nah, Joe won't give it back to me. <laughs> I gotta do something. Hello, Mel. How are you? Oh, Professor Pochnik, my favorite teacher. You look peeved about something, Professor. I am. I was sitting in the park, and some kids were painting Easter eggs. Then I dozed off for a while. What happened? When I woke up, my nose was red, white, and blue. <laughs> Mel, you don't look so good yourself. What's the matter? Oh, Professor, I'm in terrible trouble. I need money. Mel, my boy, I would give you the shirt off my back. And it would fit you, too, because it's your shirt. <laughs> Thanks, Potch. You know me, Mel. Money never meant a thing to me. When I first married my wife, I never worried about money. If she asked for $5, I'm letting her have it. If she needed 10 I'm letting her have it. If she needed 100 I'm letting her have it. Well, why were you so generous with your money? <laughs> I said, no, she's letting me have it. <laughs> Professor, I need $100 to pay the person who finds my egg. You too? The Chamber of Commerce talked me into entering my egg for $50. I haven't got the money either. What do we... Say, Mel, I got an idea. What is it? I'll find your egg and you'll find my egg. <laughs> it's a regular egg and I. <laughs> You're Fred McMurray and I'm Claudette Colbert. <laughs> Professor, that's a great idea. My egg is almost impossible to find. I hid it in a place no one would ever think of. The egg bin in Mr. Colby's supermarket. Who would ever have thought of that? Me, that's where I hid mine. <laughs> well, now we got nothing to worry about. Yep, you save $50 and I save 100 Oh, I'll get the phone. Hello, Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. This is the mayor's office, Mr. Blank. We've just issued a new ruling. Yes? <laughs> Any merchant offering a prize in the contest cannot take part in the egg hunt. Yes. What? You, you mean I can't find Professor Pochnik's egg and he can't find mine? That's right. Goodbye. Professor, did you hear that? Hear it? I've already passed out and come to. <laughs> Mel, what are you going to do? Professor, as soon as I come to, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> that sparkle and dazzle, a breath that's fresh and sweet, then try Colgate Tooth Powder, for the new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. Yes, this new all-purpose tooth powder produces an amazingly rich, active foam that's marvelously effective. Every time you brush your teeth with this new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder, your whole mouth feels clean, sweet, fresh. Your teeth regain their natural sparkle. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten that Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And as for cleaning, you can depend on Colgate tooth powder revealing the natural brilliance of your teeth. Yes, Colgate tooth powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you can expect or ask of a dentifrice. Try Colgate tooth powder today for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Now, Victor Miller, the sportsman, and If This Isn't Love. Shh. What we've got to tell you is entirely confidential at this moment. A secret, a secret, we've got a little secret. Shh. A secret, a secret, a secret kind of secret. We're aching for to shout it to every daffodil And tell the world about it In fact, we think we will If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy With moons all around and cows jumping over 
and cows are jumping all over. There's something amiss, and we'll eat our hats if this isn't love. Not grapple because, 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 because you're so adorable. If this isn't love, then winter is summer, autumn, spring, and fall. If this isn't love, my heart needs a summer, and that isn't all. We're swinging on stars, we're riding on rainbows, we're busting with wet, and we'll kiss your hand. Back to Mel Blank and trouble again, as usual. To make a good impression on Mr. Colby, Mel offered $100 to anyone finding his egg in the annual egg hunt, and now Mel has got to get the money back in some way or pay $100, which he doesn't have. But now to add to Mel's troubles, along comes Hartley Benson, the town Bo Brummel. Hello, Hartley. What do you know? Only what every girl tells me. Hartley, you're wonderful. Hartley, you're beautiful. Hartley, you're adorable. <laughs> Mel, boy, it'll break the heart of every girl who calls, but I'm taking myself to Niagara Falls. (laughs) Oh, Hartley, the way you rave, you'd think every woman was crazy about you. Well, form your own conclusion, Mel, but the telephone company comes to me for their phone numbers. (laughs) In fact, statistics show that last year, 200 women... Dialed the operator and said, I want a policeman. 400 women said, I want a fireman. And 28,749 said, I want Hartley Benson. (laughs) I tell you, I tell you, Mel, it's gotten so that I can't keep my receiver on the hook and it's cramping my style. Why? Well, as soon as I'm out with a girl, three minutes, I say, deposit another five cents, please. You must get plenty of slugs. <laughs> Mel, old boy, you'll need more than slugs to pay the $100 to the person finding your egg. Well, how can you afford so much? Look, look, old boy, look at the way you're dressed. Hartley Benson, I'm dressed in the latest style. When I get a letter, it's addressed to Mel Blank Esquire. Well, you may have that distinction, Mel, old boy, but when I get a letter, it's addressed to Hartley Benson, Woman's Home Companion. <laughs> Mel, I'm practically a household necessity. <laughs> so is a mouse trap. <laughs> now, now, that's that's getting very nasty. And to you, I say, hmm. <laughs> now that I've blown my top, I must go. And I leave you with the two most beautiful words in the English language, Hartley Benson. <laughs> Goodbye, old Mel. Nice all seeing you. <laughs> what an old character. Bet if he could get his parents' consent, he'd marry himself. Oh, but that still doesn't solve the problem of how to get my egg out of Mr. Colby's egg bin. Hello, Mel. Ugga-boo, ugga-boo-boo, ugga. <laughs> Hello, mighty potentate. Ugga, ugga-boo, ugga-boo-boo, ugga. Say, mighty potentate, I noticed the flag flying at half-mast outside your house. Are you commemorating some tragic event? Oh, yes, Mel. My wedding anniversary. <laughs> oh, too bad. I, I mean, congratulations. Uh, how long have you and your wife been married, mighty pot? Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, Mel, was the 20th round. <laughs> Tell you, Mel, I'd been better off I'd married John L. Sullivan. <laughs> John fought clean. <laughs> you know, I'll never forget the day we were married. It was in 1929. 
Oh, that's the year of the big crash. Yeah. It looked as though the whole thing fell on my wife's face. <laughs> You know, Mel, I should have known there was something wrong at the ceremony. You know how on the back of every bridal auto it says, Just married? Yeah. On the back of our car it said, Condemn. <laughs> Tate, how come I wasn't invited to your anniversary party? Well, Mel, I tell you, it was just for relatives and my wife's friends. Naturally, we had only relatives. <laughs> what a party. When I carved the turkey, my wife stood next to me and she said, John, carve the wing for Cousin George. Now carve for Uncle Leon. Carve Tom. And carve me. God, what a temptation. <laughs> well, what part of the turkey did you finally carve for your wife? Ha! <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It's just that I've got no one to talk to. Well, buck up, mighty potentate. You think you've got troubles. I've got a $100 egg in Colby's egg bin. How can I get it back without Colby recognizing me? Well, that's easy, Mel. You're good at disguises. Make believe you're a, an out-of-town farmer. Buying some eggs, you'll get it back. Say, that's a great idea. Thanks, Mighty Potentate. Well, so long, Mel. I gotta be going now. Oh, where are you going, Mighty Potentate? Well, I can do one of two things. I can go to the movies and see my favorite brunette, or I can go home and look under the wig I'm married. Come <laughs> <laughs> well, on, Mel. I got the boo. I got boo, boo. I got Now to get down to Colby Supermarket. A farmer wonder how I sound as a farmer. Hmm. Hello, Colby, old Lord. Hey, sounds just right. Oh, but Mr. Colby might not let me pick out the eggs I want. I know. I'll send Zuki over to distract his attention in some other part of the supermarket while I pick out my egg. Oh, Zuki! Zuki! <laughs> Happy Easter, Happy Easter. <laughs> How long is it till Christmas? <laughs> well, Zuki, what can I do for you? Well, I want a bottle of meat, a bottle of meat, a pasture, a pasture, a homogenous, pasture, a homogenous. Elsie's best. <laughs> and I also want some cheese. Oh. Well, what kind? It's a sweet, it's a sweet, it's a sweet, it's a sweet, uh, 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 America, uh, 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 pot. No, 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 uh, make it Swiss. Oh, uh, how much? Well, uh, slice it until I tell you to stop. Oh, okay. You say when. Well? Well? Stop already! You sliced through all the cheese and two salamis. Hey, Mr. Colby, why are you hanging around the egg bin? Well, to tell you the truth, Rookie, I've got my $50 egg hidden in that bin, and I'm not letting anybody get near it. What? Oh, excuse me, Rookie. I see another customer coming in. Pardon me. Well, may I help you, sir? Oh, howdy, Bob. <laughs> hey, think the rain will hurt the alpha falfa? <laughs> uh, I, um, I take it you're a farmer. I take oh, it. yep, yep. I've been milking cows all my life. It's all I ever done, milk cows. Getting so I can't shake a man's hand without putting a pail under it. <laughs> oh, but I can't complain. Milking cows pays me a good salary. Oh, what do you make? Pull down about 50 a week. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think I'll take a dozen eggs. Eggs? Yeah. Oh, uh, just a second, sir. Oh, why would a farmer buy eggs? Don't you have any chicken? Oh, sure, sure. In fact, my chickens lay a lot of eggs. I put a radio on the chicken coop, and it made one chicken lay 50 eggs in one day. A chicken laid 50 eggs in one day because of a radio? Yep. She got so interested in one program, she dropped everything. <laughs> What do you want the eggs for? Well, uh, uh, we use the eggs for hatching purposes. Got me a setting hen. Yeah, she was setting on some eggs when she took sick. 
Now I had to sit on the eggs myself for a week. What? What happened? Have a cigar. <laughs> yeah, I'm also having a lot of trouble with my Rhode Island Red. Trouble with your Rhode Island Red? Yep, she's being investigated by Congress. <laughs> Now I'll take my aid. All right, all right. But uh, I'll pick them out for you. You'll pick them out from... Well, uh, don't don't bother. I'll, I'll be back. Hmm. What am I going to do now? I got it. I'm desperate. I'll hold him up. I'll take one of these bananas off the stand, wrap a handkerchief around it, and use it as my gun. And I'll put a handkerchief over my face, too. See, it's a good thing Mother taught me to be neat. Always carry two hankies. <laughs> well, here I go. Stick him up, Colby. This is a holdup. Oh, uh, don't shoot, mister. Take my money, take my clothes, take my jewelry. I don't want none of those. Well, what do you want? Your eggs. My eggs? <laughs> yeah, I steal them all the time. I'm an egg yeg. <laughs> a what? Uh, you've heard of the James boys, Frank and Jesse. Well, I'm one of their brothers. Well, how come I never heard of you? I always stayed in the house. Oh, what's your name? Home James. Oh, <laughs> this whole thing sounds highly ridiculous. Now, careful now, Kobe. I got you covered. Oh, is that so? Give me that gun. Uh, be, be careful, Mr. Kobe. You're bending it. I'm bending it? Yeah, this isn't really a gun. It's one of your bananas. Oh, male blank. I'll break every bone in your body. <laughs> you get out of paying a hundred dollars for your eggs? Well, you see, Betty, when your father found out it was me, he got so excited he dropped all the eggs. Well, then the egg hunt didn't cost you a penny. Well, not exactly, Betty. It cost me ten cents. Ten cents? Yeah, your father made me pay for the banana. <laughs> well, Blank, we'll be back in just a minute. Use Colgate tooth powder Keep smiling just right Morning and use it each night. It cleans your teeth, makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Isn't it so? The whiter your teeth, the brighter your smile, the cleaner your mouth, the sweeter your breath. Then try Colgate tooth powder, Colgate all purpose tooth powder. Thanks to its foam, its rich, lively, penetrating foam that swirls around your mouth, Colgate tooth powder leaves your breath fresher, sweeter. In seven cases out of ten, it's been proved Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And just wait until you see how beautifully Colgate tooth powder cleans your teeth, reveals their natural brilliance. So for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet, use Colgate tooth powder, the all-purpose tooth powder. Use Colgate tooth powder. This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening. Good night, and ear the ear the ear. That's all, folks. This is Bud Houston reminding you that Colgate tooth powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blank Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blank's Fix It Shop. Lovely Joan Bennett is another famous Hollywood star to rave over cashmere bouquet, bow cake, the new cake makeup sensation. Joan Bennett says, I'm wild over cashmere bouquet, bow cake. So clever, so practical, with a makeup sponge in its own moisture-proof compartment right in the compact. Yes, cashmere bouquet, bow cake, for the first time, brings you the makeup sponge right inside the case. Buy the new cake makeup sensation, cashmere bouquet, bow cake. At Cosmetic Counters today. Remember, Mel Blanc at the same time every Tuesday night. This is CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System.